Hey there, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Chris. I hope you're doing good. I am because today I'm going to talk about the Sigma 14mm f1.4 for L mount, i.e. Panasonic and Leica. All the shots you're going to see in this video were shot with my Leica SL2S, which I think is very appropriate and it makes sense because this lens is mainly aimed towards astrophotography. I say this is great for astrophotography, but it can also be used for daytime landscapes, for architecture, indoor photography, and whatnot. So you can really shoot different case scenarios with this lens, but obviously the fact that it opens as wide as f1.4 is mainly because you can shoot stars. There are lots of technical informations, but I want to keep it simple. And in summary, there is an advanced aberration correction called sagittal coma flare, which for those that don't know, is basically a distortion of the shapes of stars. There's a high degree of precision in the construction of the lens itself. It is made fully of metal besides the focusing ring. This is made of rubber, which is, I think, good when you go outdoors, and for example, in winter or times when you need to be able to have a good grip. Rubber is a little bit more grippy, so I think it's great. One thing they did include is the aperture ring like they did in most or many of their recent lenses. That is something if Sigma, you, if you're watching, it's something that I really appreciate because I come from a Fuji and Leica background and they usually have a physical aperture ring on their lens. And that is something I really like actually. Now you can also put the click off. So turn it off. And at that point, it becomes clickless, which is great to choose the exact aperture you want to be on. Otherwise, when you have the click, it goes one third of a stop each time you go up or down. And finally, there is a ghosting and flare reduction through both optical design and coatings. So that will reduce the amount of flare and ghosting, which can be really annoying when you're shooting a landscape or when you're shooting something and you have this flare. If you don't want it, uh, well, this is going to help reduce it. A few more things about this lens. First off, this is a weatherproof lens. So if you're going in environments that are dusty and or humid, you should be good to go. It's not going to go into your sensor. Uh, that is good because this is the type of lens that you would use for astrophotography. And who says astro says nighttime. And who says nighttime says cold temperatures and sometimes humid or dusty. Let's say you shoot uh, in the desert, I don't know, or in some mountains or whatnot. You have the peace of mind that you're not going to have these elements getting into your sensor. The minimum focusing distance is 30 centimeters, so about one foot. It opens at maximum, like we said, f1.4 and minimum f16. It weighs 1 kilo, 170 grams, and it's 15 centimeters long. So you can see that it is a pretty intense package. It is pretty heavy and uh, and big. And if you combine this with a Leica body or a Panasonic body, you can see that it will become pretty big and pretty heavy pretty fast. And in terms of price, we're currently at around $1,600 on B&H. Let's now talk about the accessories and the different features this lens provides. The first thing is that you have a tripod socket right here. What this does is, first of all, this is Arca Swiss compatible. So if you want to put this straight on a tripod head, you should be able to do so. I can do it. I did it with my tripod. That is very useful. And the fact that they give it to you is simply because this is such a wide and heavy lens that if you were to put this in front of your camera, it could tend to become very front heavy. And that might break some of the circuits and the connection between the camera and the lens. So putting the actual lens on the tripod will avoid having damage happening to your body. There's a manual focus lock, which basically prevents unintentional focus shift in long exposures. And that is um, a little feature, a little button that I wasn't aware of. And when I went out the first day, you know, all excited to go take my astro photos, um, I got frustrated pretty fast when I couldn't focus manually. And I didn't know why, and that was pretty upsetting. And next day I found out that there was that lock. And that lock, like I said, is when you're shooting, you know, a long exposure of the, the stars and you don't want to, by mistake, move a little bit your focus and make it uh, blurry as a result. As we would expect, there is a rare filter holder right here in the back. And what that does, if you don't know, is it gives you the ability to put filters at the back, for example, ND filters. This is great for two th reasons. The first one is the fact that it is the closest to the sensor, so you will avoid any type of 
light leakage and it's going to be as close as you can so that is great and the other reason is because the front element here as you can see is a bit of a bulb a sphere and the sun hood is included and cannot be removed so it would be hard to put filters in front also because the diameter of these uh, lenses tend to be pretty uh, pretty big and pretty intense and hard to manufacture or even just to find the right diameter so that's why you can put them in the back that brings me to the next point and that is the cap of the lens there's something really cool about it you can see there's two uh, two numbers one and two inside and when you press on them it allows you to basically put filters right there and to keep them for later so if you need those filters to be available later you can just put them in and they will be held in the cap of your lens you might think yeah but i can just put them in holders separately yes you can but when you go outdoor to shoot astrophotography one thing to keep in mind is that usually logically it is very dark and you can see most of what you're doing so having this little feature here helps you have all your gear next to you and be able to just take it and put it away rapidly without being scared or having the fear of scratching it getting it dirty and whatnot speaking of the cap when you put the cap on your lens like so, there's only one position it goes in and you have this nice little feature to take it out when you pinch. And it might seem dumb, but it is very important to me to have a cap that does not come off by itself. And I know that my lens is actually protected. So who is this lens really for? I would say 99% this is a lens for astrophotography for those that want to photograph the skies, the stars at night, but it is also good for landscapes. Now, if you're gonna shoot landscapes with such a lens, the thing is, it has the particularity that it can open all the way to f1.4. When you're shooting landscapes at daytime, um, you don't really need to go under f8 or f5.6 if you really wanna take some light in, but I would go between f8 and f11, and the reason for that is because you're having your camera on a tripod, and when you put your camera on a tripod, you can have a slow shutter. So who cares really about the maximum aperture if you want to have everything sharp? And if you want to shoot interior, you know, it's the same thing when you're shooting architecture, when you're shooting for real estate. Yeah, here, real estate. It's not something I would shoot with a 14 mil. I never shoot under 15 for real estate. And the reason for that is because it becomes too wide. And when people or clients are coming to see the property, they're like, oh, okay, um, I, I thought the bathroom was a little bit bigger based on the photos. And you risk losing a sale because you promoted something that was bigger than it actually is. So there, I hope that answered most of your questions, if not all. If I forgot something, obviously, and like always, write it down in the comment section below. I will answer gladly as soon as possible. And why not subscribe to my channel if you like my content so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Take care, keep taking great photos of the stars, and I see you soon. Cheers.